Greetings, everybody. We're back again. It's the first episode of the new year. I uh, had a little bit of a hiatus there just for the holidays and whatnot. So, we're back to the regular schedules. It's 2019, bitches. Let's do it. Booyah. New year, new me. What he said. <laughs> new you. You haven't changed. No. no. <laughs> what no. you said, not what he said. No, no. He hasn't changed. That's you haven't changed a bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably for the best. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so. Guess we'll kick it off with the pocket dumps, and since how it's the new year, may as well start off who's with someone who has something new. Oh, sure, I'll kick it off. New to me, an <laughs> old Spyderco military with Digicam handle and S30V blade blacked out. Mm -hmm. Silver hardware, only adjustable on one side. It's totally weird weirding me out, because all the new ones are adjustable from both. The lanyard holds small. It's, it's totally not flared. That's yeah. weird. That's an old no, brand. No, it's not flared. It's uh, thicker on the inside than so. Because the I think new ones seats. have that like <laughs> yeah, hourglassy yeah. shape to them, right? The uh, yeah, the old ones actually like the, the ones nowadays in the pair of two. Yeah, have that space in the middle, but they're also flared. Yeah, yeah. fair yeah. enough. They have both. Weird. Um, yep. Um, I've wanted to own one for a long time. Got a good price on it. Couldn't pass it up. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's S thirty. It's reliable. I like it. Yep. Follow that same progression and uh, new to me. The uh, Benchmade Fact, it's all kinds of pokey. That it is? It is, it is. A little modified? It's like a tie light that I'll actually carry. You get to practice your Canadian fighting grid now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, and I'm sorry, and I'm sorry. Yep. <laughs> Those handles, uh, that's not how they can. <laughs> no, actually. Um, I don't know if you can actually see that there or not. No, sir. Closer. Closer. <laughs> there we go. Them. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Okay. See, they're weathered. Yeah, they're, uh, they've been distressed, I would say. I like it. I like the contrast. Me too. Intentionally. Yes. Yeah. 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 So. And I've got my Benchmade Cricket River with the uh, Banksia pod scales on it. Yay. Nice. Modifications for yeah, the win. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Mm -hmm. It's a good classic. I like it. I like seeing that knife in your pocket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you make stuff. You should carry it. This yep. turned out really nice. Yeah, I yeah. am pleased. That's a good show side. Mm -hmm. That's why I flipped it. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen these knives side by side. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, those are two big, beefy knives. That they are. <laughs> big and beefy. And then last up. We're going to end on big and beefy, too. And okay. I'm actually carrying it because all weekend. Ooh, it's schmutzy. Where is, schmutz. There was a schmutz cloth. I don't know. What the hell? Gone with the wind. I even prepared one and everything. <laughs> one of the cats must have anyway, um, Cold Steel re released a whole bunch of their new 2019 products, so <laughs> I have kind of got excited about some of them, so I've been yeah. actually rocking the Cold Steel knife here. So. I, I think we've all been getting kind of excited over some of them. Yeah, yeah <laughs> yes. definitely. Yep. And I love the Ultimate Hunter with the, the new contoured handle and the XHP. The mm -hmm. changes compared to the old school one. I Yeah, I'm a big fan of this knife. So. Yep, that's good. Um, and big and beefy on that note. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, we are. It's a callback. <laughs> <laughs> gathered around today to take a look at a couple knives from the Boker Plus lineup of things. Um, they are some of the classic in this sort of series. They are a couple designs done by Voxnays. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, the F3 and the F3 II. Mm -hmm. The two is with Roman numerals, for those of you out there wondering. <laughs> the F3II. I, I. It just I, sounds I. weird. F3II. <laughs> yeah, that's the little guy. Mm -hmm. And the variants that we have in for the showing today is the little one is uh, dual-sided with the titanium. And then this guy is a titanium carbon fiber, but you can find bunch of variants between both sizes. And they also make a G10 version mm -hmm. okay. as well Very that's cool. available instead of the carbon fiber, which is also the most cost-effective one as yeah. well. Would make sense. Is it a texture G10 or is it smooth? I don't know, sir. I don't have it sitting in front of me right now. <laughs> Just <laughs> I have a carbon curiosity. fiber one and a titanium one to play with tonight. <laughs> well, big snobs. <laughs> big snobs that we are, I'm sure we would go for these handle materials mm -hmm. over the G10 anyway, given the choice. Oh, undoubtedly. Given yeah, the choice. For sure yeah. I would. Indeed. So, uh, it's a bit of a tank of a knife. Yeah. Uh, most noticeable thing about these knives, when we first played with them, at least for me, was the blade thickness. 
Uh, the small one has a blade thickness of four millimeters. The large one has a blade thickness of five. Yeah, they are. You didn't bring your calipers, but I'm rocking a cold steel blade. You're rocking a spider co. Like, there's some thick knives over. Uh, Paul did bring. <laughs> oh, look at that! Yeah. Look at that! Hey, hey. And I think they're I thicker than box. a cold steel holder <laughs> makes me laugh. Yeah, it's a little yeah. bit ridiculous, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So they're uh, the first Boker Plus knife to be using S35 uh, VN. And when they were released, um, so the little guy is four point. 12 mil and on perspective I'm sorry. big guy is 5 mil yeah 5.0 yeah. Yeah. and yeah like I was saying perspective mm -hmm. on the cold steel outdoorsman oh, yeah. or ultimate hunter sorry I want to lift it up yeah, yeah. It makes more sense like this just under three and a half. Yeah, three point four. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of goofy. I think these silly. are thicker than my lion steel. So for the larger guy, it's got a overall length of eight inches, which is about as long as fifteen aspirin. That's too many aspirin for one take. Yeah, yeah, it would be it would be a lot of aspirin in one go. You'd bleed. So yeah. <laughs> if I pounded up that aspirin and made a lot <laughs> <laughs> How long would that be? <laughs> Longer than eight inches, inches probably. Yeah. How, How wide is this Yeah, exactly. Yeah. As as wide as the blade. There you go. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. And yeah, weighing in at five point zero four ounces, it's about half the weight of the average human heart. Really? Yeah. Wow, I didn't. Hmm. Well, I guess so. I mean, I don't know. I never really thought about the weight of a human heart before. <laughs> I'd be concerned okay. if you had. So, hmm. I am concerned now. <laughs> As you should be. Yeah. And then with the little guy there, the overall length is 7.125 inches long, and it would take about 2,000 sheets of paper to, like, stacked up to be the same length. Fair enough. Hmm. That's a, a lot of So now paper. we need to figure out which phone book is <laughs> 2,000 pages, and then it would be the equivalent of... I'll give you two populations you can pick real quick. New York or LA? Yeah, that would be... I'm going to North I America, would, by the I was going to go, like, India or... Hong well, Kong. Hong Kong, China, yeah. Yeah, like... Yeah, as soon as I said that, I went, like, or international. Yeah. Yeah, I would go Hong Kong. Now we need to figure out... <laughs> Which phone directory has 2,000 pages? Yes. That seems like a task. We'll get back to you on that. Yeah, we'll tell you tomorrow. <laughs> no, we won't. <laughs> Don't get up on that. And then weighing in at 4.37 ounces, it is about 2 million times heavier than a grain of salt. Take that with a grain of salt. Indeed. <laughs> 2 That's million a lot of times. Yeah. That's a lot of salt. It is. I wonder how many bags that is like. Like how, like how much space physically does that occupy? This much. Know. Yeah. Right here. <laughs> I don't think salt is the same density as <laughs> steel and you titanium. You don't know. You don't know these things. I, all right. <laughs> yeah. I'm not arguing that. Less than a box of salt. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many grains are in a box of salt? A lot. Too, Too many. many. <laughs> 50. I'll Google it later. <laughs> you can't prove me wrong. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can, I can make these grains as big as I want. It's one <laughs> grain. <laughs> yeah, I guess you can get one piece of salt that's this big. Yeah. <laughs> Check out, like, rock salt. <laughs> guess who had the cloth? Yeah. The cat yeah. stole Mia it. kidnapped the I cloth. Oh. Mint recorded, like Mid -recorded. we were wanting. <laughs> Not something you want to throw into a pair of gym shorts. Uh, no. <laughs> a little bit heavy for that. It's going to be hard for summer carry. Yep. Another reason they're so heavy. Uh, no skeletonization. They're actually... Well, before we jump on the, even the body, go back to the blade thickness. Not Although sure. it is the blade thickness, it still slices really nice. You've got enough surface area that you do have a taper as well as a hollow <laughs> ground on was, these guys. I was just going to say that one is hollow ground, which is surprising. <clears> so, yeah. so both of those guys yeah. are going to be... Uh, Relatively decent cutters, yeah. yeah. 
even though they do have a thickness of absolutely ridiculous, right? So I wonder if these would have that fatal flaw where, like, you get a certain depth into a cut, and once you hit that depth, the blade wants to fight. To get past well, that? Well, depends on the material. material yeah. Thing. Yeah, yeah, a wedgie blade shape is always going to do that. Of course, of like, course. Even with my Adamas, which has, I think, a four mil thick blade. It's ridiculous. But it's the same kind of thing where if I'm going through, uh, like, shaving wood, yeah, wood will splinter off and it's great. If it's a bunch of foam, yeah, <laughs> it'll catch. The thing that I found most surprising was, like, cucumber. Hard vegetables like that where you literally hit an edge and it doesn't want to slice anymore. And mm -hmm. veg like it That's odd. Yeah. So... Yeah. When these ones first came out, they were S30, mm -hmm. and they converted to S35. I don't know nice. what year they converted okay. to S35. It was probably within the last couple, but I believe they were released in, like, 2013, I want to say. That sounds right, because the uh, <coughs> posts online, I could find people talking about it, were like, oh, I'm excited because this just came out kind of thing, uh, 2014, and they were talking about S35. So it could have been within the year. Oh, okay. So they uh, automatically converted them over. Yeah, because all a lot of the reviews that I was watching when these knives first came out, they were talking about it in S30. Like, okay. several Very times cool. on other YouTube reviewer channels and things like that. Um, based off of a box design called the F3, they didn't change the name. It yes. looks mm -hmm. almost identical to, but I believe the original ones were all titanium, and there might have even been some contouring on them. Fair enough. Um, nice. He made 25 of them, and that was it for Jeez. the original F3s, and they're still apparently a pretty sought-after knife if you've got one of the original ones. Yeah, they being did, that limited, I'm not surprised. They did 20 with this really, really high hollow grind, and five with a full flat. Mm -hmm. So he even mixed it up when it came to... Different blade grinds. Variations. Yeah. Very cool. High, high demand, even though those ones were only tipped down. They were, <laughs> yes. That Although, would get us into the handle, I suppose, conversation. <laughs> yeah. They do come tapped for tip up. Mm -hmm. Which is nice. Or tip down carry. Yes. On the Boker versions. Yes. Yes. Well, yes. The, the, original ones ones the original ones were only right hand tip down. So. That's so sad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which, when it comes to tip down, when I say right hand tip down, I'm like, when it comes to tip down, I don't think any of us care which pocket we put it in anymore. It's just more irritating that it's tip down more Stop. than <laughs> So it's funny that when you put a tip down carry, I'm more likely to carry it in the left pocket because I'm still a little more reassured that I'm not going to be slicing myself. Yeah. yeah. Although opening in the opposite direction, right? So at least with the heavy detents that that at least these knives can have, not as worried about it. Yeah. <laughs> Something like this, if I was going to buy it, I'd carry it in the back <clears throat> pocket for that same reason. Yeah. On the right side, back pocket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's exactly how this guy's been carried because yeah. I don't have a choice. <laughs> Uh, also, really nice anodizing on yes. really pretty, both yeah. the back spacers, and and these things are so thick you can just stand like there's no balancing act. There's no just like look, it's here. Um, but really nice blue on the back spacers. It doesn't look cheesy or anything. It doesn't look overdone. No, it's a nice. As well as on the clips, nice satin so, blue. Yeah, for sure. Now I'm curious about the longevity of the anodizing. Mm -hmm. That's something we've talked about in the past. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It fading over time and things like that with wear, right? But kind on smooth surfaces, it seems to wear off pretty yeah. quick on smooth stuff. Like the interior portion of those ridges is probably going to last a little bit longer, but yeah. the top surfaces are going to be the first things to go, yeah, exactly. if anything. And speaking of the ridges... Yeah. You found mention uh, in several places, actually, like Blade HQ, where they, in the description, they refer to that backspacer as a Nessie backspacer and they actually use quotation marks so i'm not sure if that's their own stylizing on it or not i don't think it is because it mm -hmm. I, I seem to remember seeing it on more than one website that is odd and i think like what nest monster maybe like i don't understand what that's yeah. necessarily a reference to and i tried looking on vox's website for some kind of a hint <laughs> couldn't find much if you know the answer to that, let us know. Indeed. Yeah, yeah please. Get in the comments and let us know what's going on. Very curious. I, I think the Loch Ness thing is kind of with the spine sticking out and whatever. Um, I have heard that that does develop uh, a bit of a cheese grater effect going in and out of the pocket. I can imagine. And especially when you decide to put it into a tip-up configuration... The negative part is this is sitting right at the top of the pocket now instead mm -hmm. of at the bottom of the mm -hmm. pocket because realistically, if it was tipped down, carry. Um, I really like the weight shape. That itself. would boxy really awesome design yeah, with yeah, the spear point. Awesome yeah, not with piercing like, tip on these really things. Big. Yes. Again, with a knife as thick as it is, sometimes it's hard to get something with just a really definitive piercing tip. Like, look at your fact is a perfect example of yeah. that, yeah. or even your military. Yeah. And I find these guys are 
Um, very similar in my mind in a little bit in the way to the uh, CRKT Bantams mm. and stuff that Fox Snake oh. designed. Oh, yeah, yeah, for and sure. Going to that tip, I find this a much more usable, utilitarian, versatile sort the of tip. Them, yeah. Rather than yeah. the big crazy belly. Yeah. The yeah. Belly. yeah. And the Amicus almost got there, but this is, mm -hmm. again, I think this is still a better tip well, on it. It's yeah. a yes. better use of a swedge. Yeah. Really. The one modification that I have seen on line steels specifically that I like a lot in this style of blade is a clip like that. So yeah, and I again, like when you're looking at the thickness of the blade, you're really not compromising. Like that's why I was grabbing the military. Is you look yeah. at the distal taper, especially mm -hmm. on a military, and it has a continuous taper from the back of the knife to the front of the knife to show it off. Whereas the F3s, and you're just you're just skinny minis over yeah, there, skinny yeah. all the way down. So yeah, um, and you look at the taper on this, and again, you keep a large majority of the blade stock thickness. Yeah, right um, to the edge. For right heavy the duty work, and it doesn't compromise the fact that that thing is just a little needle when it comes mm -hmm. to the tip of it, right? Yeah. So I think that's a big pro on blade shape and blade design. Yeah, indeed. a lot of props on that, right? So I think the design overall was very well thought out. Yeah. Yep. I, I can easily say that Voxnez is very quickly becoming one of my favorite designers. He does nice stuff. Yeah. He's someone to pay attention to, for sure. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. I don't necessarily love every single thing that he comes out with, but there's a knife every year that I'm like, I like that. Well, and with him working with so many designers as well, yeah. is that whether it's Viper Knives, whether it's CRKT, whether it's Boker, whether it's Fox, whether it's Giant Mouse, like he's Spiderco, I think he's got some Fox. Yeah. I think so. Was that the Drunken? Was that one of his? No, no, no that's, that's a sick bitch. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Regardless, like, another one of my he's, <laughs> So. He, you gotta keep tabs on what he's coming out with. He's gonna have some a, cool stuff. He's a busy man. Yeah. But then there might be designs that I like that come from another company, and I'm like, that doesn't have the materials I'm looking for, but I really like that knife. Yeah. I hope yeah. one of the other places that he's branded out come out with something similar to it or whatever it may be, right? So, like Nigel saying with the the Batum, the Bantam? CRKT, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you like that knife, but you you want something in more premium materials. Yeah, yeah. There's an option right there. Yeah. There's options, yeah. For sure. So. Yeah, another one of the nice pros for this guy is uh, the lock faces have been carburized. Or at least it's a steel. It's steel yeah. lock insert, yeah. Yeah. A steel lock bar, yeah. Rather than titanium on steel. They didn't mm -hmm. put a steel it's lock bar. We have had a conversation on whether it's been carbonized or not. Right. Um, because we are very curious about that. Uh, I don't think any of us actually looked on Boker's website, so no, uh, the I carbonized didn't. steel insert. But I didn't see any mention of it. I'm sure we might be able to go if we do find out, and if we didn't, then I just did that for no reason. So, <laughs> which is the first time in an episode. <laughs> Fair enough. I think the ratio is probably like ten to one. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. It's all right. So yeah, definitely in the pro category for sure. Yeah. Um, I like the opening hole. I like the fact that it is an opening hole rather than a slab. Uh, yeah. um, that one's a hit and a miss for me, and we'll probably get into that on the pros and cons. Well, yeah, I like yeah, that it's an kind of where I was going. I like that it is an opening hole. Yeah, you can get into the details <laughs> yeah. of yeah. But yep. the other definite pro that I had to bring up was the price point mm -hmm. yes. on these guys. Um, and regardless of what we're going to talk about with the cons or whatever, I think the price point on these knives are very reasonable for what you're getting. S35 blue anodization on titanium clips and hardware. Um, <laughs> Either back to back titanium or carbon fiber for titanium, and what you're paying for these guys is a very reasonable price. For that much steel. Yeah. Five yeah. mils worth of chunkiness. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that much titanium, too. Like, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. carbon fiber, uh, for that matter. Um, that does lead us into a little bit of the cons, but also the pro. It's a big slab of titanium. They did not it's skeletonize these. So, yeah. It's, yeah. so if you like a super solid heavy knife, um, this is not very, a bad option. very dense. This thing's a workhorse, yeah. for yeah, sure. Yeah. So. Want to bridge in from there? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I'm just going to jump off with the thumb hole there because that was one of the yeah. last touched ones that we were easily to jump off onto on the cons. Not chamfered. Those are sharp edges. Sharp edges yeah. and a strong detent do yeah. not go well together. Nope. Now, I'm going to say it right now, they're not any sharper than the spider coast. Depends on the spider harder coat, detents. but harder detent. You yeah. bet, my friend. That yeah. will lead us into another point that we're all in very much universal, and it's a big con that we're going to yeah. go into here. And I think the big reason on why it's sharp on the finger is because some of the detents on these bokers are so strong that it's digging yeah. into your finger finger to release it. My fingers actually hurt right that. now from playing yeah. with yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, the smaller one that we get, we got an offering for this is, is reasonable. It's pretty reasonable. It could be a touch lighter, but I wouldn't want it too much lighter than that. The carbon 
carbon fiber one, we have digs. Like, you yeah. have to... Yeah, it's a little ridiculous. This one with a little bit of oil would probably be great. Yeah. 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 It, oh, oh. Uh, well, we'll get to that later. And I think that yeah. that speaks not for the design of the knife, not for the, the comfort and the ergonomics, because those are all very much pros, mm -hmm. but this is Boker's quality control, yeah. is what we're talking about there. And Boker's Chinese factory has been known to have a little bit of a harp when it comes to their quality control issues. At least the consistency between, like, mm -hmm. a hard detent and a reasonably stiff detent. Um, yeah. Dotting their eyes and crossing their yeah. teeth, kind yeah. of thing. And I'm just curious, uh, like these are brand new out of the box ones, so I'm just kind of curious as far as if there is any sort of break in oh, of with course. it or not. There very well may be. Mm -hmm. A lot of knives have. Now, one of the things I've noticed is um, the hole also is somewhat covered with the lock bar, and that's again as a lefty thing, and yeah. I can finger flick. If the detent wasn't so strong that I'm pinning the lock bar <laughs> down at the same yeah. time, yeah. and because these detents are so strong, if you think you can pin a ZT down, these bokers will show you how to never get your knife deployed, because <laughs> Jesus, man, yeah, it's yeah. something I have to be super conscious about. And then if I try to do it with my thumb off the lock bar, I really have to stuff my finger in there to get it done. Mm -hmm. So that, again, it's a lefty complaint, yeah, but... not really designed for lefties. Uh, the whore was an awesome idea in theory, but I have some issues with the execution that they've done on this one because yeah. of the detents, because yeah. of the not machining the lock bar to open it up. Things like so not necessarily the design, but the execution yeah. of that Yeah, yeah for sure. sure. Speaking of Boker choices, I don't know how the customs were. I'm pretty sure they weren't like this, but both of these are running on Teflon. Mm -hmm. And Teflon can be a very... It's one of the smoothest dry systems... That you can get, but out of box, you can hear it. Like, yeah, it's it's noticeable to all of us sitting here at the table. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like seeing Teflon on knives that are worth over one hundred and fifty dollars, and even that's kind of pushing it. Yeah, um, I feel like phosphor bronze would have been a way nicer choice, especially with how the detents are. Maybe help smooth things out once it, it gets going. Um, potentially one of the things that's helping keep the price point down. And yeah. not by much. No, honestly, I mean, that's going to be such a minus yeah. Given how nicely done everything else is, as mm -hmm. far as materials is concerned, that's seriously my only my only real complaint. I feel bad complaining about it because I have a knife that I really like with Teflon. Oh, them my, my, tef, my, yeah. my tie light from Cold Steel has... And but using as Lion, my, steel. Lion Steel. I was going to say, yeah, I'm yeah, sure well, it's yeah, the yeah. Lion Steel, and I have yeah. the small one At on that Teflon as well, and that's my only complaint about that knife is that it runs on Teflon. Now... I did just pick up some blue lube and I've been working on that and if you blue lube up that lion steel, it pops really nice. I so am quite the, impressed with it. So, so this will probably be the same sort of deal. KPL, nano oil, something like that, you could probably see a significant difference, but out of, uh, out of the box, meh, mm -hmm. you, you, you need to do something to make it a little smoother action, for I sure. think, yeah. So, um, so other con for me that stands out. Uh, love the anodization on the pocket clip. Um, hate the spring tension on the pocket clip. These mm -hmm. things are like god awful oh, tight. Yeah, yeah, like if yeah. you want to rip the crap out of your pocket, oh. like it's a kit cold steel AK forty seven. This is another good offering yeah. that'll do it. Like Jesus. And the lip doesn't come up very much oh. there, so it's going to be hard access to get it over any sort of seam Man, at all. Not so, impressed. Yeah. Not impressed. You're impressive. gonna pull a fingernail off. Oh, yeah. yeah, you're gonna hurt yourself. Okay, my shirt pocket, which is extremely thin, I'm just wearing a collared shirt today, it's a difficult to yeah. get this knife yeah. in and so, out, and that's two very smooth materials. Now, again, if you want to have something rock solid never coming off your pocket, you can yep. get shaken upside down by the ankles, and this thing's not going to come out. That might be part of the reason behind it, though, what Joe just touched on there is two very smooth materials. You want, you might want a little bit more attention, but that's D too much. For sure. Yeah. yeah. But like I'm trying to imagine putting this into a pair of jeans or anything yeah. with any level of thickness. Uh, and like actually we're also talking about things working in, right? And that might be something that works in. The funny part yeah. about it is even the review I saw with the gentleman that had the custom knife, um, his one of his only complaints was that the clip had too much spring tension in the titanium. So that might be a design feature. It might be it, it's not a bug, it's a feature. <laughs> yeah. So, but for us, I think collectively, it's still a bit of a something we don't like. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a con. Yeah, even yeah. on a smooth on smooth, this will end up beating up your finger and or your pocket. Yeah, trying to yeah. slide one hundred percent for sure. So, um, yeah. 
we dabbled on it kind of in the pro series but a little bit in the con series as well is the cheese grater of the nessie backspacer get it into your pocket yeah, um, yeah. especially for 99 percent of us that are gonna make this tip up carry yeah you'll be that's the first thing you'll be introduced to every, every time. time you put yeah. your hand in the pocket sorry there are right. tens of us tens <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other side of it is um that's the only spot where there's any jimping at all in this knife. So for something that's supposed to be a super heavy-duty, thick-bladed monster, um, not that I particularly want jimping on all my knives, yeah. but it's it's just odd that they choose to put it there and so aggressively. I'm going to stop you there, though. It's not the only place to put jimping on it. And I'm not a huge fan of it. Not a huge fan of it. of another con. <laughs> yeah. that, it is a bit ridiculous. It's brutal. Brutal mm -hmm. to unlock. Um, just aggressive, I think, is more than anything else. So yeah, that's the uh, jimping along the inside of the lock bar that Paul was just talking about. Unnecessarily aggressive. Yeah, that is Could've... pretty crisp. I refer to it as the texturing on the Consigo's G10. Like, it is that rough... Uh, it's worse, I think. Wear gloves. <laughs> this could have used some rounding of some kind. Mm -hmm. Or just toned down, even, yeah, yeah, like a wave pattern rather than the sharp crescent that it's going, mm -hmm. going on. If I own that knife, I'd be hard pressed not to go in there and probably just take all of that out. Yeah. Just smooth it out completely. You think we're overreacting? No, no, no. You should hold this knife. <laughs> um, my thumb's the proof. All of yeah. our thumbs are like this evening little when chewed. we're playing with it. Yeah, a little chewed up. Truth be told, we did have calluses before this started, but, but they weren't this torn up. I mean, <laughs> there's joking around about Sabenza thumb, like my Gail Bradley. I'm sure you've noticed that you yeah. really, if you decide to carry some of those knives, that they just dig in a little bit more. And this is, again, one of those, like, it just digs in a little oh. bit more than the average knife. My sure. PPT hole. Um, Whoa, yeah, you're, whoa, my PPT's thumb hole. I'm pretty sure we need to censor that. <laughs> Black bar. <laughs> oh, wow, that was, just, that was great. Thank you for that. Just have an image of Paul looking backwards over his shoulder. <laughs> PPT hole. <laughs> so anyways, uh, the PPT thumb hole on it is very sharp like this, and it will tear you up too. Mm -hmm. and yeah. I love that knife, so... But it's detailed, it's not nearly as strong as this. No. No. Actually, that was something I was playing with earlier, was um, just were. like this. Well, not often onto the detent ball, but seeing how that actually felt once you get it past the detent. It's not terrible. It's just coupled with that super harsh detent, that slight, like almost 90 degree curve is ridiculous. Yeah. But it's, that's even worse. It's so loud. <laughs> it's oh. such a loud knife. Oh yeah, just for all you out there. It's yeah. not quiet, that's it for echoes. sure. It echoes, it echoes, <laughs> for sure. Sharp. Yeah. It is going yep. to announce itself every time you pick it out of your pocket. Mm -hmm. Were there any other cons anyone wanted to touch on? Uh, I think, well, skeletonizing, we kind of dabbled on that. That was yeah. another thing that I wish they hadn't done on some of the titanium, whether it's with the carbon fiber scale, whether it's a pure, like, just, mm -hmm. yeah, thin, thinned out the weight a little bit, because they are a little bit of a brick in your pocket. Even that's if they are in an extra 10, 15 bucks, I think it'd be worth it for the extra milling. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's about it for me. Yeah. yeah. So I would guess we should take the time now to thank the Cutting Edge once again, supplying these knives for us tonight for the review, for us to check over and whatnot. Yeah, Always they uh, appreciated. just recently got some Boker offerings in, and mm -hmm. these were a couple of them, and so we took advantage of being able to play with some of the new Boker stuff that was sitting on the shelf. So. Um, and I guess, last but not least, I guess we got to rate these bad boys. I yep. have been doing yeah. a rating system, yeah. Yep. And, uh, yeah, I, I I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> how to rate these knives. What kind of range are you hovering within? What's, oh, I, I'm in the, the C to a B plus realm. Yeah, it, I could agree average. That. But my, my heart is split on the execution that Boker kind of inconsistent on the detent compared to the design of the knife mm -hmm. itself. The designs are awesome. I give the design an A. Yeah. yeah. What my hesitation is is on these particular offerings, they're Boker offerings that have some fit and finish flaws. The titanium clip that's going to chew my pocket, the detent that's going to chew my thumb. Um, 
ergos wise the mini is actually calling my name i was asking nigel how much this is this thing earlier because <laughs> again for the price point i think for what you're getting that thick of a material with titanium and s35 when I you like that size when you yeah. tell me the price point that it is i'm like five years ago that s35 with yeah. full slabs of titanium with blue anodizing that's a three hundred dollar price point when you're looking Easy. at it and yeah. it two and a quarter or two and a half or whatever this mm -hmm. thing is going for now right so definitely reasonable that's one of the better things that these knives have going for them. So I think that's where I'm split, is I give the design an A, but I give Boker's execution of it a C, and I have to land somewhere in the middle. So I guess on the whole, I give them a B. Just like, yeah. let's just yeah. give it across the board, and I'm yeah, yeah, going to rank fair. it as a B. I agree. I was leaning B minus, but yeah, I mm -hmm. can see that. A, the design is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Once again, I think we're pretty much consensual with that sort of a ranking that we usually tend to kind of average out. And with the two sizes, I don't think we can even get picky about the hand size because if no. you don't, like, I think we're split on that. I prefer the Mini. Yeah. How do you feel about both those sizes? It's not bad. Like, the Mini's a little awkward, but it's at that point where it's not annoying. But then, yeah, like, of course, this one's just comfy. Yeah. Okay, so I think cool. even that, well, some of us will have negativity because the shape's not what our particular XL, double XL <laughs> hand size might be, so you give it a little, but with two shapes, you pretty much can figure mm -hmm. out anything from a small to an extra works. large hand will work. Right? I like companies that put out options. Like yeah. the same knife in different sizes yep. like that. So B's across the board. You got to yep, be yep, a knife. I think yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. Um, price point design itself definitely an a for what so, you're getting yeah. yeah it's worth checking out and figuring out whether you can live with a lot of the cons or mm -hmm. not um, yeah it depends on how how much they annoy you too right yeah i mean th there's certain knives in my collection that would probably annoy you but for me i can look past it and i'm tempted by that little guy to be honest yeah. for mm -hmm. what you're paying for you're getting a lot of knife for sure definitely so yeah i think that should be about that uh, thanks for joining us again. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share along, do all that fun stuff. And we will see you again next time. Nigel the Smith, signing off. I am who I am. I'm Dennis Fibers. I am the Iron Joe. And I'm XL.ca. Catch you all next time. 2019, bitches! Woo! <laughs>